Hi guys, in this lesson I'm going to show you how to play solos with chords. If you play solo on jazz standards uh, and you're familiar with uh, people like Wes Montgomery and Joe Pass, uh, you are probably also aware that it's quite common to uh, harmonize uh, an entire line in a solo and have part of a solo that is consisting of uh, harmonized lines or only chords. Um, one way to approach this is to uh, have a way to play every note in a scale with uh, one chord. So uh, that's what I'm going to do uh, in this lesson. I'm going to give you four uh, exercises which are basically, um, in this case an F major scale, harmonized with uh, with the different chords so that you can uh, play that entire scale uh, with uh, different chords and uh, then I'm gonna put that together uh, in some examples and show you how uh, you might make some uh, some solo uh, lines using only chords so um, let's just get to the chords since we're in the key of F the best place to start is probably by playing an F major 7 uh, chord through an uh, F major scale. So what I've done is um, I've taken the F major scale on the B and on the E string so, uh, and harmonized that with an F major 7 chord um, except for one spot where I can actually put an F major 7 because uh, on the B flat you can't really play an F major 7 with a B flat in the melody so I chose to play, um, to play a B flat uh, triad or a G minor chord sort of a bit open to interpretation. Um, so let's just take the first exercise. So for the first uh, row for the one with the melody on the B string. I chose to use three, three note voicings because then I have a consistent amount of uh, notes under the melody so that if the melody is high I just have one more note and it makes it easier to go from from one type of voicing to each other. It sounds more smooth to me anyway. Um, yeah it's pretty straightforward I guess. Uh, well, F major 7 with a 13 different variations around, de around an F major and F major 9, uh, another F major 7. You notice I don't play the root when I'm using the exercise because uh, I want to keep the options free to move fast so I keep the number of notes down. Uh, except for this one of course the B flat as I mentioned. Um, because if you have, um, well let's see where can we do that, if you have this chord which is F major 7 that note doesn't really work on top of it. So you're anyway not going to have that on an F major 7 for an extended period of time. So you might as well just use a passing chord. And in this case I chose to use a G minor or B flat major um, chord. Uh, so the next one, well then we're back where we began with the first uh, chord, this one. So the next chord we're going to do is a G minor 7 and if I harmonize an F major scale with a G minor 7, then I'm going to get this. So, um, you see, they're all fairly straightforward, I guess. Um, in the first part of it, of course, I'm using this G minor, uh, and this one on the third note, and the one I put in between is actually a C major triad, but that's one option for harmonizing the E on the, on the G minor. And I find that if I'm moving around again, it's not a note you want to land on anyway, so uh, and or rest on anyway. So it's always going to be sort of a passing chord. 
Um, yeah, G minor, at 9, obviously G minor, and then 11, and then we're back. Uh, I think the top set, so on the E string, well, drop 2 voicing with an extension, same idea, drop 2 voicing. Uh, uh, G minor 9, but still drop 2 voicing. And here I chose to harmonize the E, so the 13, with actually with a minor 13 voicing. Again, probably in a standard you're not really gonna be resting on this for a long time. And then we have another drop 2 voicing, and another drop 2 voicing. The third exercise is to harmonize the F major scale with a C7 chord. So not too many surprises, uh, this C7 and then this C7. In this case the, the one note that you can't really um, harmonize without changing the chord is uh, the 4th degree, so the F. But actually you can make this a C sus and it, it will work, so that's what I did with this. Then we're back in this and with the 13, so the basic uh, C7 and Uh, for the next set of strings, again, um, I can pretty much get away with just using the drop two voicings. So C7 with a nine, with a thirteen. Uh, C7 with a nine, that's a drop two voicing. Then C13, another drop two voicing. Uh, G minor drop two voicing in this case, and then the same one as the first one. So now we have the C7 also, um, and the next chord I'm going to do is um, a D7 flat 9. Of course that's not strictly in the F major scale, so actually I'm going to be harmonizing um, a G minor harmonic uh, scale. Uh, and I also added a note to the G minor harmonic scale because I don't want to have only the flat 9, I also want to have the sharp 9. So that would be like this. Yeah, so the first voicing is actually just an F-sharp diminished triad and then a few normal D voicings, so you get this D7, flat 9, sharp 9 then we get this variation on a D7, uh, flat 9, D7, flat 9 sus and then we get these drop 2 voicings, uh, drop 3 voicings flat 13. For the um, top set of strings, again, drop two voicings work really well, uh, which is also what uh, Wes is using most of the time actually. Um, and since it's a D7 flat 9, uh, I'm mostly relying on the dim voicings. So the first is this E flat or F sharp diminished. Then you get this again, uh, the G, you have to harmonize it as a source chord. So, uh, So that becomes this sort of A half diminished with a D in the bass, another dim chord, and then uh, fl from that one we're making a D7 uh, flat 9 flat 13, dim chord, and then we get this normal uh, flat 13 uh, drop 2 voicing with a flat 9 in the melody and a, with a sharp 9 in the melody, and uh, that's about it. So of course the different voicings that I'm using in these four exercises, uh, you can go look them up. I have lessons on most of them, um, if you're not familiar with them. And um, I also want to add that, of course, I just chose some, um, and, and it's, it's something that's not really set. It's definitely not set in stone. It's not even something that I probably do the same every time myself. Uh, it kind of depends on what's handy for the situation. 
Uh, so making an exercise like the one that I made here for each of these chords with voicings that's, that fits you better as long as you, as you can play every note in the scale have a, and have a solution for that then uh, that works really well and probably making the exercise yourself is uh, better than just playing mine. Um, but now let's try and do some examples uh, with making lines with, uh, with this material. Okay, so the first example sounds like this. And, uh, well, fairly simple. Uh, it's a uh, 2-6... Two, Two six. It's a two five, uh, two five one six in uh, the key of F. So uh, the first part of the, on the G minor. Well, walking up the scale, the melody is this. So the idea is that when you create these kind of lines, you need to make fairly simple, fairly logical melodies. And the good thing about simple melodies is that they don't really skip too much around. Uh, so you're going to end up moving in the scale quite a lot, which is what we start with here. Just up the scale, up to the ninth. We skip our third up, down a step, and then for the C7, 13, we start here. And here I'm using the fact that we can go down like this, keep the same chord, and then change the melody around. And then on the F major seven, first this voicing, then I skip up a third. Again, just moving, moving down the scale to uh, six here, um, and then you get uh, this dim chord on the D seven, so basic, basically just moving down the, the G uh, harmonic minor scale, and then down to the F sharp, and if I was to continue I would probably go here or So in the second example, I turned around the turnaround, uh, which means that I'm starting on the one chord. That sounds like this. So um, again, walking up the scale. to D7 flat 9 and then uh, up to the flat 13 and down again and then this sort of rhythmical figure on the G minor and then in this case I chose to not use the the C7 out of the F major scale but to use the harmonic minor version of it because since it's resolving you can do that anyway so uh, C7 flat 9, sharp 9, flat 9, resolving to an F major 7 on the forehand. Probably uh, one thing to keep in mind also is that when you're making stuff with uh, lines with chords like this, um, you probably need to be a little bit more inventive with the rhythm. Uh, it's not enough to just sort of run up and down in chords in 8 notes, but you really need to. Um, to use to think more rhythmically, so um, I think the examples demonstrate that quite well. That um, I think my interpretation of the sound is kind of like a big band. Um, so that kind of rhythm with uh, basically just with uh, quarter notes and uh, and eight notes for this sort of medium tempo. So the third example sounds like this. So uh, again, now the turnaround is <coughs> starting on the G minor, uh, and the first thing I play is actually a D minor uh, triad, harmonized with uh, G minor chords. Then I go to this C7 with a 9, and I use a similar melody that I used in, in the first example, so I do using the 
C7 and 13 using the 9 and then resolving to this F major 7 voicing, which you might also know as an A minor to 2 voicing. And then this, uh, which also has a sort of A minor flavor to it actually. But it should have this root, of course. Um, the next thing I do on the D7 flat 9 is that I'm actually running, I have a melody that's. So I'm first running up, harmonizing an F major triad with a D7 uh, chord voicing. So I get this, dim chord, dim chord, and then th this drop 2 voicing of a well, D7 altered or D7 uh, sharp 9 uh, flat 13, and then with a flat 9 instead of the sharp 9, and then I'm resolving that to this. G minor 9 voicing, or you might also know that as a B flat major voicing, but in the context, of course, with the G in the root in the bass, it's going to be a G minor with a 9. So, as I already mentioned, the exercises that, uh, that I showed you in the beginning here are more guidelines on how to make your own exercises. They're just as much meant to uh, show you the tools that you need to have and you need to maybe figure out for yourself in a way that works for you. Uh, in order to play solos like this, um, but still you can just practice mine and sort of figure out like, oh I need to change this uh, and how can I make this easier to play. Um, and then the examples with the turnarounds are sort of trying to show how I might use it. I think the analogy with the big band is really good that you sort of hear big band phrasing, uh, especially because the, in the beginning it's going to be a medium tempo and uh, it's very much that kind of rhythmical phrasing and rhythmical language that you're going to be playing, probably. Um, so I hope you can use it to create some uh, chord solos for yourself and uh, use that when you're playing standards. Um, if you like this video, then uh, feel free to like it on YouTube and uh, also feel free to subscribe to my uh, YouTube channel. Uh, you can also go to my website where you can download a PDF of the examples with the exercises and. Uh, uh, demonstrations on how to put that together. Uh, there you can also subscribe to my newsletter if you want to stay up to date with whenever I make a new lesson or upload uh, other things like charts or uh, release CDs and those kind of things. Um, if you have any comments then uh, feel free to leave them here in the video uh, or you can also connect with me on uh, Facebook or uh, Google Plus or Twitter or Instagram uh, and let me know there. Uh, suggestions are always welcome, uh, stuff to uh, that, that you guys want to figure out or want to have me do a lesson on, uh, that's always nice to know. I think this is actually one of those lessons where somebody requested me talking about this. Um, so yeah, thank you for watching and uh, until next week.